Okay, welcome everybody back to Steve Talks Boxing X, STBX, where we talk real boxing with real boxing fans. And this week's show, we're talking about this weekend's fight in Zordo Ramirez, who has the WBA versus Chris William Smith, who's has the WBO. Also talking a bit of, about Casey Taylor, Amanda Serrano, also Mike Tyson, Jake Paul. Now, pleased to say joining me this week is Jordan. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks for coming on the show. Hi, Steve. Yeah, thank you for having me. Naz, it's great making your debut. So uh, welcome to the show. My first question for you, let's address the elephant in the room straight away. Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul this Friday. Is it a yes or no for you, Jordan? If I'm honest, Steve, I think it's probably a yes. And that's quite controversial. I know a lot of people are quite curious about it. Um, <laughs> because obviously a lot of people are saying, you know, Jake Paul's not a real boxer. Um, I'm inclined to probably agree with that. I think, you know, his resume at the moment is still quite light. And obviously Mike is a very seasoned pro, uh, having not fought for quite a while now. Um, it's going to be an interesting fight. Absolutely. You know, I think we need to obviously consider the facts, which are the fight was postponed due to Mike having, was it in a, I believe a stomach ulcer? Um, but I don't think that takes anything away from him at all. I really don't. I do think this fight is going to be very one-sided. I think it's going to be very much, you know, the uh, Mike Tyson show. But I think it's also quite, you know, um, quite big of Jake Paul to actually step into the ring with him. I really do. Mm -hmm. So Even at 58 years old, a 58-year-old yeah. Tyson. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, just seeing some of his training clips and that, you know, he's, he's very much trying to sort of get back to as best of a former, his, his former self. Um, I, you know, I think obviously there's a lot to be said, you know, he's not no longer in his 20s or 30s. He's, you know, like you say, 58. So we need to obviously consider that. But I think it is going to be the Mike show. I think he'll very much take that one. And I think, you know, it's it's going to be very dangerous for Jake Paul. I think he's going to have to very much keep his cards close to his chest, keep Mike at bay and just, just keep moving and do everything he can, really. Sure, sure. And the, not a bad payday for both of them, I was reading today as well. <laughs> Uh, I've got to be honest, I haven't seen the figures on that, but no, I think, I, I think they're... Jump... million for Jake Paul, so... Wow. Yeah, <laughs> so... That's, that's just incredible, absolutely yeah. incredible, so... Okay, so what what you saying prediction-wise? I, I weren't even going to come on the show and ask you a prediction, because I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Jordan, I think he's going to say no straight away to the, the fight <laughs> itself going ahead, but go on, hit me with your prediction then. For me, I think, if I'm honest with you, again, this is, again, quite a broad thing to say. Um, if, if the fight isn't rigged, which I'm hoping it's not, I don't think it is. I think it's it's Mike Tyson comfortably. I really do. I don't think it goes to the later rounds. I think Mike will be looking to, you know, put on a bit of a showstopper for the fans. Um, I think he'll probably want to have a bit of fun with Jake, let Jake probably get that experience. And then I think Jake will probably take, you know, quite an aggressive punch. And I think he's then going to sort of have the rude awakening of actually I'm in here with a real boxer. Yeah. And then I think that's probably when Mike will then look to sort of close the show. Yeah. OK. So you're saying that a knockout stoppage for, for Tyson then? Yeah, so... I think probably within the, I'd like to say within the first six. Sure. Wow. Wow. Because this fight is official fight. It's a sanctioned fight. It's going to yes. go on his record. He's going to go on his box record. That's a lot it. of Mike, yeah, a lot of Mike Tyson fans would be like, "Oh, why is he doing that?" Imagine losing Jake Paul on your record. But that's, then again, that's the thing, it, yeah, the thing is, it, mm. if, if Jake does happen to win it by some sort of you know divine miracle, that then does sort of really place him in the rankings, and I think people will have to take him a bit more seriously. Mm. Yeah. And I'm sure Mike, you know, obviously the money is helping towards the the fight as well, the motivation for the fight. This is a Netflix, uh, obviously, broadcast. What would you think about Netflix venturing into boxing? Would this be good for the sport? Yeah, definitely. I think it's going to sort of open up for a lot more people to see behind the scenes. You know, I think a lot of people are also going to have more access to it. You know, I was reading the other day that there's, you know, talks of like Matchroom and um, Frank Warren's Creamsbury looking to potentially go down the same, like similar promotional routes and that. And I, I think ultimately we do need to sort of look at how we can diversify that and make boxing a lot more exclusive to people, 100%. Yeah, I, I agree as well. The more different outlets the better for the sport and talking about a fight on the undercard katie taylor she's getting her best payday on this fight she's getting something like five million against amanda uh, amanda serrano how do you see that fight going 
Uh, it's been what now? Nearly two years or so since they last fought. Yeah. You know, both have had uh, a couple of fights since. You know, we, we've got to look at the fact that, you know, Katie Taylor has taken the loss to Chantel Cameron and then got the redemption. I think, you know, Amanda Sereno is going to be sort of looking to, you know, make that redemption as well. So I think they both know that there's a lot on the line. I would probably say, if I'm honest, I think there's probably a bit more pressure on Amanda not to lose again. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, for Katie, she knows what it's like to now, you know, experience a loss and need that redemption. So it kind of sort of opens it up to actually they both know what that loss and that hurt feels like. So I think if I'm, I think we're going to be looking at a real, real action packed fight with those two. I think it's going to be all out and I, I think it'd be a really good fight. Mm -hmm. Prediction for it? Uh, for me, if I'm honest, I'm going to, I think I'm going to be backing Katie on this one. I really am, you know, I think, Good. like I said, it's, mm -hmm. it, I think, you know, she knows what it's like to experience that loss and that hurt. And I think she's going to be very much wanting to retain those belts, keep it close to her chest, you know, cards close yeah. to her chest. And I think she'll just go out there and I think it will be an all out war between them. Mm. A lot of people are saying this may be set up to fix for Serrano to win. And then that third fight at Croker Park, which would be obviously be the ending fight, I should imagine, for retirement. But, uh, <laughs> fight for Katie Taylor but yeah let's not assume that let's see what happens first I'm, I'm guessing absolutely absolutely okay let's go back to Saturday's fight Ramirez Billum Smith this card talking about free to watch uh obviously Netflix venturing into boxing but it makes a change it's not a pay-per-view although Sky Sports announced it today the zone what do you think about that not being pay-per-view um, if I'm honest with you, I'm you know I'm I'm quite shocked. There's two belts on the line. Mm -hmm. It's a huge fight, and you know I think the winner has to. They also have to consider that the winner then you know potentially faces much bigger fights. I think people are going to be tuning in from you know all, all around the world, not even just because it is such a big fight with two world titles, but you've got to consider the fact that you know. Um, Ramirez brings quite a big Mexican audience. Chris yeah. Adam Smith's got the UK backing. They could have been that could have been a massive cash cow that could have. So you know, I think the fact that it's not is for us as fans is fantastic. But I'm I'm must admit I'm quite shocked with that one. Very shocked. Yeah, yeah, me too. It does make a change to get this. Not only the main card, obviously the undercard, some some good fights on there as well to get that free to watch as, as well. So, but not complaining at the same time. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, not definitely not complaining with pay, paying for pay-per-views do, do you think chris has received the credit he he's ought to ought to get so far in his career um i think probably prior to this fight perhaps not you know he's had what we were saying one loss in 21 fights um you know he's managed to redeem that as well i think coming off of that you know he's, he's managed to beat richard um he then went on to fight lawrence acoli and then he's obviously beat I think, to be honest with you, Chris's mindset is just completely different now. I think, you know, we're seeing a Chris that sort of levels above where he has been previously. Um, and I definitely don't think he should be wrote off. Absolutely not. I think, you know, he's now at that point where he is really proving to people he's world level. You know, he's, he's looking after that belt and he's holding on to it for dear life. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a, a fantastic fight. Again, another showstopper, in my opinion. Yeah, sure. Did, did, did you expect... William Smith to beat Reactpour with such ease in that last outing. To be honest with you, I, I even tipped Reactpour to win, so I got that totally wrong. <laughs> I, th I think I was probably similar to you. I think, you know, I thought, I kind of thought to myself, you know, would this be make or break for Chris? Would he buckle under the pressure? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he, he boxed beautifully. I think, you know, he, he did himself absolute wonders. And I, th I think, to be honest with you, that might have been potentially the making of Chris Billum Smith. That would have been the confidence that he needed, really, just to sort of say, actually, I'm, I'm up there now. You know, l let's let's make this happen. Let's get let's get stuck in now. Yeah, 100 percent agree with that. He, he fought the right tactics, played it out to a T. And I, I, was, I was surprised with the ease he, he managed to pull that off. Do you think Billum Smith will be Ramirez's toughest opponent today? Oh, that is a very tricky question. Um, it's, it's, if I'm honest with you, I think, I think probably Bivol. 
I do think Dimitri Bivol will be Ramirez's toughest fight. My my reason for that is, you know, I think probably just Bivol's resume. You know, look at the way he was able to sort of keep loading up on Canelo. You know, he kept Canelo at bay. He was yeah. throwing com- combinations. Um, you know, I, I I remember sort of rewatching the the fight and that, and I w- remember watching a bit of a like you know tactical breakdown. And I know Canelo's thing for when he's gone in at like heavy, one of his biggest things is to sort of pick at the arm, isn't it? With the hook, he did that yeah. to um, Liam's Callum Smith, sorry, wasn't it? And that you know to the point where Callum Smith's arm bulged up and that, and I it, that just didn't work on Bivol, and you know. B- Bivol is, is such a hard opponent. So I, I think for Ramirez, he, he needs to sort of consider that actually take that loss, you know, but I think don't underestimate Chris Billum Smith at all. I think he'll be a very, very close second, in my opinion, on that. Sure. sure. Talk, talking of Bivol, you mentioned Ramirez's only loss. Do you think in, in the back of Chris's mind, is that is there anything to worry about, do you think? Um, I, I think there's obviously, you know, if I was in Chris Billum Smith's corner, I probably would have studied that fight. I would have looked at what's gone well, what hasn't. Yeah. I think that the key things for Chris Billum Smith is he needs to keep Ramirez at bay. He needs to make sure that he's loading up on those punches, combos. He's looking for opportunities, you know, and he just needs to be kind of quite tactful as well because, you know, with uh, Ramirez being a southpaw, that's going to sort of throw a lot of mm-hmm. curveballs at him. So, you know, I, I think, to be honest with you, keep him at arm's length, load up on those combos, and, you know, you're just going to have to sort of just stay out of his way. Yeah. My next question was going to be the Southpaw. I was looking through Chris Billum Smith's box rec, and I could only see one Southpaw he's, he's fought in there, and that was early in, in his career, really early. Obviously, Ramirez is Southpaw. Is he, is he going to be ready for this? And one other thing I didn't know, Zordo actually is Spanish for left-handed. I found that out this week. So, <laughs> so um, is, is Chris going to be ready for this? Interestingly enough, I'm I'm glad you say that because I um you know when I obviously saw the matchup, I had a look myself, and yeah. in in the amateurs, Chris has four to um two southpaws. Okay. So yeah, it was um, Chevy and Clark and Dion Jumar. Um, Obviously, both of which I believe he lost to, so he he has got a bit oh, wow. of experience. But yeah, I didn't just... go as far back. I just checked box rec rather than amateur, but that is interesting. Yeah, yeah, but I I think you know sort of credit to what you've just said there as well. It's they're not necessarily those weren't world level fights. No, you know Ramirez obviously his resume is is fantastic. You know he's had forty odd fights. So, again, I, I don't think anything can be taken away from him there at all, you know. And, uh, you know, as you know, boxing is anyone's game. It, it really is how, how well you perform on the night, yeah. um, you know. So I, I think ultimately Chris just needs to consider that with him being a southpaw, he's going to be really tricky to box. Yeah, um, I'll take it preparation-wise, they're going to bring a hell of a lot of sparring in for Chris on, on that southpaw, isn't there? I'm guessing yeah. that's, that's just a gimme, isn't it, really? So. I'm just saying preparation wise that they, they they should be ready, shouldn't they? I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. I I'd like to think that, you know, they would be sort of bringing in a lot, like you say, a lot of southpaws, um, a lot of like heavyweight people as well, you know, yeah. a lot of heavyweight components, um, just to sort of bring him up, you know, on that level, get him used to sort of in there with some, you know, hard hitters and that and some some world class sparring, hopefully, just to sort of get him prepped as best as they can because they know how much is on the line. Sure. Sure. Ramirez. You mentioned experience. He's almost got double the amount of experience of Chris Bill and Smith. How how much is that going to take a factor in, in the fight? Yeah, you know, I, I think you know, there's that old saying in there that styles make fights, absolutely. But I think ultimately as well, it is the experience. You know, he's got like you say, he's got pretty much double the amount of fights. Um, you know, he's got some good names against him. So is Billum Smith, arguably, I'd say, you know, Billum Smith's last couple of fights are probably a little bit more impressive yeah. in terms of what he's coming off of as well. So I, I think really it is going to be a case of both of them are going to really be sort of standing their ground and looking to sort of set that scene from early doors. But I, I don't write off Ramirez's experience, absolutely not. And I think with him being, again, at Southport, double the amount of fights, I think Chris has got to consider that. He's got to be tactical and he's just got to you know, just get in there, get the job done. And like I said, I, th- I think a lot of it will rely on loading up on those punches, combos, and just trying to sort of get him out as quickly as he can. Sure. 
bookmakers have made Rem- Ramirez a strong favourite. You know, Chris is obviously underdog. You know, have, have they got this wrong? Do, do you think? It's tricky, and I think with the bookies and that, they've probably got to go off of you know a combination of factors there. Um, you know, I I would say that they probably are doing that. I think like we've just discussed, based solely off of the amount of fights that they've had. Yeah, you know, both sort of again, you know, Chris coming off of that that loss to Richard, um, you know, Ramirez coming off of the loss to Bivol. In my opinion, I think it's going to be, I think it could probably be a bit closer than what the bookies make it. I really do. I, you know, I, I would be inclined to say, I, th- I think it will be a lot closer. Yeah. Closer. Okay, sure. Not your prediction just yet, but how do you see the fight going? Um, if I'm honest with you, I think both of them are going to go for it. I really do. I think, you know, based on Chris's resume, you know, this is obviously a huge fight for Ramirez. There's a lot on the line, you know, and again, without sort of over jumping on any predictions and that, I think both of them know that, you know, Jai Opatai is probably after this, you know, mm. based on whether or not a rematch clause is in place and whatever else. But I think, you know, they've both got so much, there's so many prospects after this fight for them, you know, just at cruiserweight alone. I, I, I think, yeah, it's just going to be so, so, so close. But, in terms of how I think the fight goes, I think the first couple of rounds, you know, both of them are going to be looking to make, you know, make a scene. I think both of them are going to be looking to make a statement. And I think the first couple of rounds will be will be very quick. And I think, you know, by mid rounds, we're going to see, you know, a bit of a bloodbath, in my opinion. What what trading shots do you, do you, do you think? Yes, yeah, I, I think so. I think they're going to be trading shots. I think it's it's going to be a really good fight. You know, I, I hope I'm right anyway. I, I certainly would hate to see, you know, two big cruiserweights like those not sort of looking to load up very early and just sort of go and get the job done. Yeah, yeah. OK, now's the time. Final prediction time, Jordan. Who's going to Final win? prediction for me. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, I, I think on this one, I am going to back Mr. Billum Smith. You know, he's he's delivered the goods in the last couple of fights, you know, He's a fantastic British fighter. I'm going to back my own on this one, I think. You know, Good. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He, yeah, it's Chris Billum Smith for me. I think, in my opinion, the, the outcome is like, a, although I'm going to sort of contradict myself a little bit, and, you know, I, I think it will be a bloodbath. I think it will probably go on points. Mm-hmm. So, points victory for Chris then? Yeah. Away from home as well. So, away from home. <laughs> yeah, always a tough one. But, yeah. Who would you like the winner? Obviously, I don't know your prediction to fight next. I know you mentioned Jay there. Is that obvious one? Yeah, definitely. For me, I think, you know, Jai Opatia is absolutely the next big fight. Yeah. You know, I I think he's got big plans. You know, just listening to sort of his camp and like his corner speak, it sounds like they want to go for Undisputed eventually. I think for either Ramirez or Chris Billum Smith to be part of that journey would be phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, sort of sorry to go off on a bit of a tangent here, but there's also talks of, you know, once the whole heavyweight division's back in, sort of back in line, um, if Usyk can go undisputed again, there was talks of him coming back down to try cruiser. and go undisputed yeah. at Cruiser. So mm-hmm. ultimately, there's so many big fights to be made. I think naturally it's got to be off tyre. And then I think if you can make a statement against someone as good as him, you you really are worth your weight in gold and you know that opens up so many avenues for going up to heavyweight and you know that that division really then becomes whatever you want yeah yeah i, I agree it's, it's certainly whoever wins this it's going to open a lot of doors isn't it really yeah. So, yeah big paydays that's it and paydays yeah and paydays what, what did you think of the rest of the undercard any sort of standout fights there for you um yeah i think the you know jose ramirez and um barbosa fight will be good Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I'd like to see Ramirez win this, you know, um, just sort of having a look at his last couple of fights since the Josh Taylor loss. It doesn't look like he's really been with anyone like massively credible. Um, So, you know, I think this fight for him would be would be really good, really good. You know, it seems like he's kind of had maybe a few handpicked opponents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I I think it's it's, it's a good little undercard. Yeah, for, for the whole the whole fight. Although a lot of I guess the UK viewers will be just tuning in for the, yeah. the Chris Billing Smith Ramirez Absolutely. fight. Yeah, but it, it should be good anyway. 
But yeah. I guess that, that's it for the show. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your prediction. And thank you to everyone tuning in. Please, obviously, support the channel the best you can with likes, subscriptions, and see if you agree with Jordan with uh, his predictions as well. And uh, enjoy the fights. Brilliant. Thank you, Steve. That's Jordan. <laughs>